Hi, I'm Emma Fachikata and welcome to this week's Warwick Weekly. Lectures across the country went on strike last week in a dispute over pay. We sent Tom Newton to find out more about the impact for Warwick. Today is the day of the planned university staff strike and we're here on campus to find out what you guys think. So how have today's strikes affected you? I've had one lecture and a seminar cancelled. I'm um, uh, an MN student from Nigeria and we've had no one uh, say that we've been on strike. We've had hardly any disruptions. It really hindered my progress today, but um, I can understand the, the viewpoints of the people going on strike. It has been irritating. I mean, I understand why. Um, and all the teachers have been really apologetic about it. Um, but it does put you out of it throughout the day. I think there's a bit of a lack of unity amongst the lecturers, to be honest. I don't even know what the strike's all about. So there you have it, mixed reaction from a relatively empty campus today, that's all from us. Findings from the Campaign for Social Science has suggested that social science graduates are more likely to be in paid employment than arts or science graduates. It would appear that the great debate of social science versus natural sciences and the arts can finally be put to rest, at least in terms of employability. The recent report has said that social science graduates are not only more likely to be, to be employed first, but will also find themselves in managerial or senior roles to a far greater extent than those who study the arts or natural sciences. The figures for Warwick are encouraging, with 93% of eco economics graduates securing a professional or managerial role. Economics graduates also have the largest average starting salary of any degree at Warwick, an impressive £29,000. The streets of Leamington Spa may be getting darker for longer, according to rumours which say that Warwickshire County Council may extend the hours in which street lights are turned off at night. At the moment, 80% of Warwickshire street lights go dark after midnight until 5.30am, apart from Fridays and Saturdays, when the times change to 1.30am to 6.30am. The rumour changes are supposedly part of the County Council's rollbacks, which aim to save £92 million over the next four years. The action could save the council more than £300,000, according to an online budget simulator. But this simulator, according to one spokesperson, does not show actual council policy proposals, but rather policy ideas. He goes on to say, the talks over switchover policy are ongoing. Attempts to have the lights turned back on a permanent basis have been unsuccessful, despite support for the council's labour faction. And finally, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Midland Stagecoach bus driver. Yes, you may have noticed last Friday some of the 22 Stagecoach bus drivers dressed up as well-known superheroes in support of the charity Stand Up to Cancer. The idea was that of David Russell, who was dressed as Superman on the day. He claimed inspiration for raising money for Stand Up to Cancer came after watching a TV documentary on the disease. Stand Up to Cancer works on raising money to fund new forms of cancer research and also engages the public, encouraging them to raise money. While a grand total for the fundraising event has not yet been announced, the driver spoke of great reception from the public and four collection boxes. Great work to all those who took part at Stagecoach. For more information on these stories and much more, visit theboard.org or tv.warwick.ac.uk. Coming up, here's Chris Henley with the sports. Hello Warwick. First up, we have some footage from this week's American football game between our own Warwick Wolves and Wolverhampton Wildcats. Wolves win big on opening weekend. On a bright, cool autumnal afternoon, your Warwick Wolves took to their home field to face the Wolverhampton Wildcats in a much-anticipated season opener. Scoring on each of the first three drives, including a rare safety when Jeff Tuxedo Williams corralled the QB in his own end zone, the Wolves accelerated to an early lead which ultimately proved unassailable. By the second half, the Wolves could rotate in their rookies and several players impressed on debut. David Wolfe crowned his first game with a touchdown from a perfectly placed outstanding pass. Rashad Flintstone Sharp also impressed during his first start on the well-respected Wolves defence. The Wildcats fought hard deep into the fourth, but ultimately 500 yards of offence and 50 points proved too strong. It's been another successful week for basketball at Warwick. The first men's team beat Nottingham Trent in a 73-51 game, while the women's first team also brought home victory in a 46-34 victory against Cambridge. Well done to Warwick across this week as they were victorious in all four matches played last Wednesday. 
women's first and second teams won their matches against Oxford Brooks and Leicester, and the men's first and seconds beat out rivals Worcester and Nottingham to achieve a clean sweep. Finally, Bucks Team of the Week went to men's fourth football team following a 4-2 win against Loughborough. That's all from us here at Warwick TV. We'll see you next week.